There is something about the Earth's polar regions that's both irresistible and unyielding. They are cold, inhospitable, lonely places, but for centuries they have drawn men to their extreme environments. Today, they are facing unprecedented change. We have travelled to the Arctic in the hottest summer recorded to document what's happening. Under the midnight sun, we sail through ice melted from the glaciers that are retreating every year. The region is warming faster than any other place on Earth, and we felt it. This has far-reaching implications for the rest of the world. We travel to Longyearbyen Svalbard to talk to the experts who are studying this awakening landscape. We are invited by the Arctic University of Norway to join their research vessel, Helmer Hansen. And we meet a diverse group of policy makers and scientists collaborating on Arctic research. We travel with them to Nyolsan, the world's northernmost human settlement and a science community at the frontiers of climate research. You need special permission to visit this place. Here, 10 nations have research bases and different disciplines are joining forces on international projects. They are collecting reliable data, which is critical for the validation of climate models. They are also studying the effects of pollution, which has reached even the remote outposts of the Arctic. We chance on the skeletal remains of this reindeer, which starved to death after its antlers got trapped in plastic trash. The unmistakable imprint of men, and a sign of our new geological era, the Anthropocene. For we have spread across the earth like a pestilence, making an impact wherever we go. What we've seen and what we've heard have underscored the importance of living within our planetary boundaries. We need to listen to the signs, the people working at the front lines. It is so important that the research that happens in this remote outpost reaches the rest of the world. This is what we hope to do with our stories, to engage society on what's happening on this earth. Here on the equator, the effects of the warming Arctic are being felt in other ways. As the ice melts, nations are racing to control resources and shipping routes buried beneath the ice. It could create new sea routes that bypass Singapore's port. This is the Pasapanjang Terminal, where container ships from all over the world dock. It is moving to another location in Tuas that will be built more than 5 metres above the mean sea level to protect it from flooding. While Singapore may have the resources to adapt to climate change, other communities may struggle to deal with its fallout. We travel to Chennai, a city of 9 million where the effects of climate change are more pronounced due to overcrowding and the lack of resources to cope. This used to be a reservoir in Kilkatalai, a suburb in the south of Chennai. But a drought earlier this year meant lakes ran dry and communities here are suffering severe water shortages. Before the drought, Pula Lake was one of Chennai's largest lakes. Now, it lies barren and empty. In an informal settlement in Chennai called MS Nagar, we saw how getting water has now turned into a daily struggle. Many residents spend hours hunting for water in the searing heat. Here, in Dash Prakash, a water tanker is meant to provide precious supply every day. But often, water is not delivered on time. Local communities are trying to take matters into their own hands. Here, in Sembakam, residents are clearing waste from a lake to prevent water contamination. They are among those making efforts to fix some of the mistakes made as Chennai expanded so they can prepare for future climate challenges. On this journey, we've seen that communities all over the world are starting to wake up to the realities of a changing climate. The important question here is, what will we do with our time on this earth?